Good day, everyone. We're here to cover the men's race. High Rocks, Warsaw, Poland. I'm here with Anthony Parasini of the Hybrid Engine and one Graham Halliday from Scotland. <laughs> Except he's actually in Poland right now. How did you, uh, have you been to Poland before this, Graham? This is my second time. Second time. I was actually in Poland at the start of the year. What for? Just a break, city break. What are you, what is your profession? Um, I'm a gym owner and I'm a coach. What's the name of your gym if people want to come support you? Elation, Elation Fitness Training. Oh, so just you're like your Glasgow, just like your Instagram ha handle. Exactly. Elevation. Keep it. Elation. Elation. Oh, sorry. Elation. elation. Elevate. That's elation. Dave Magida. You're elation. Elation. Cool. What is this? So it looks like we're about to get started. Graham, where are you at? Are you in the fog bank there? I kind of come up to the right side here. At the bottom right, you'll see me there. I'm there. I think. Who's the giant? Who's the giant in the middle? Oh my! That's God. Martin Machilius. <laughs> Jesus, that's he's Martin. Like a big God. Yeah. So he's a great so, God, isn't he? <laughs> so Martin uh, was in the Elite 15 at the Vegas race, and then uh, he did not make it last year, and he won the men's pro race in Manchester for the. For uh, the open or men's pro, how tall is he? How tall do you think Martin is? It must be six five. He six must be five. six foot five and about twenty eight stone. <laughs> I'm sorry. You love it. <laughs> you love it. Uh, uh. <laughs> What's what's the conversion on that? How many stone? How many pound per stone? Just so. What did you say? How many pounds per stone? So fourteen. Fourteen pounds per stone. Oh, sure, fourteen. Mm -hmm. Twenty-eight stones. A lot of stone, Matt. <laughs> I mean, he's a. That's. I don't know that I've seen him. I mean, I guess I must have seen him in Vegas. He just looks yeah, so massive. Like the handsome. Well, he makes you guys look puny. You probably just walked right by know. him and only saw a chest in front of you because he didn't look up. It's even worse when you're sitting in the roar right beside this guy. He looks like a Greek god. Yeah. That's what and I you're said. You're sitting there. That's what I said. <laughs> Ridiculous. So so we see some spon we, we we see some sponsors here by the way. Uh did you see that uh the they have the the Puma sponsorship over there. Did you see that Hunter signed with Puma? I seen that. Must be a big deal. Do you have a shoe sponsor, Graham? I don't, but I'm in talks with Puma. Oh. So they are actually um it's more just about providing gear. I think that's just like your kind of first foot in the door. So, see what happens. I've no signed anything like that yet. Um, so we'll see, see how the season plans out. All right, do you want to you want to fast forward here to the ergs? Yeah, let's uh, let's get moving. This first run, uh, was it short? It looks like you ran a three twenty two gram. Mm -hmm. It probably felt about a K, maybe eleven hundred. Run a bit there. Were you the first one in on the on this first wave? S second. Second. Okay, mm -hmm. so it looks like Great Britain Sandeep El Fitori was was first, but you guys both ran a three twenty two. Uh huh. He was in just kind of in front of me. That's actually my boy. That's my online client. Oh, is he? Uh -huh. Wow. Martin's head is higher than the skier. Did you see that? Dude. He can't if lift he puts his arms. His arms out yeah. Just straight in front of him. He's touching the top of the ski. <laughs> yeah. Holy cow. 
I didn't realize he was he was that tall. He's big. Big. He's got a lot of power. Uh, he's got a lot of muscle. Yeah. So you said the guy in the first year here, he goes to your gym? Um, he's from Manchester, but he does online coaching. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it felt quite comfortable. felt steady. So I think I asked you this off, uh, off the air, but we can, if you want to answer on there, what do you think your strengths are in the race? As it's usually the sides. Um, the skis, the like, all right, like, it depends on the how the first run goes, how I'm going to, like, respond to the ski, I'm going to, like, go for it on the ski, so if it was, like, a hard first run, then I'll scale back, and I'll probably hold, like, hold, like, 148, but if it was a good first run, and I feel kind of good, then I'll go sub, I'll go sub 145. Nice. Uh, do you usually feel pretty good on the runs? Do you feel like your running can improve or you like where it's at right now and you want to get better at the stations? Um, it's probably my running that's letting me down. So I, I've put a big focus towards running lately. Um, so I'm just trying to focus on that. The stations, I'd say, are fine. Obviously, apart from here, but I don't think this is like a good way to judge it. I think I need another race and then go for there. Mm-hmm. So I would a lot of, probably get a race quick. A lot of uh, people ask the elites, "What's your uh, mileage or kilometers per week look like?" Between sixty to eighty kilometers per week, running. Mm-hmm. Kilometers per week, so that's about forty miles. Forty forty five yeah, miles a week. Good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and on this, uh, this skier right here, what, what were you pulling? Started off 140 for the first 200 and then I scaled it to 144 until I reached 700 and then I was 147 to finish. 147 to 149 maybe to finish for the last two, three. So it looks like you're, um, skier time with with the transition is it 346 not the best so yeah that so that's about yeah that's a pretty quick ski for about the time you said there that is probably like a 335 to a 340 and a bit there yeah so when we get to these sleds Looks like you guys were all off at the same time pretty quickly there. Mm-hmm. I want to ask before I forget, you mentioned people walked off. Was was Dieter one of them? He was yeah. one. He was right beside me. He was having a good race. He was actually in front of me uh, on the run, but like by maybe 10 meters. And then I don't know what happened. But anyway, he ended up behind me. So I must have overtook him. And then we got into the side pool and it was just like it just wasn't moving like that's the only thing that wasn't it wasn't budging so he tried his first sled and then he tried to move to like the next lane to see if, it, if there was a difference and i think he started pulling it but the judge came up and was like no 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 um go back to the next lane and put him back in the lane then he just walked off because i think he attempted it again but like it was it, it wasn't moving at all so he just walked off Wow. So, but there was like just... at the sled. Sorry. No, you're good. I, I want to hear what you're saying. So, at the sled pool, I think there was, I'm sure there was, I seen um, at least two guys walk, uh, walk off, but Matthew says over the full course, like, I think there was seven people. Even the side push felt heavy, but I think I was three and a half minutes on the side push. Like, that's long. Yeah. And see, when I, whenever I do a side push, I never break on the first length. Never, ever. That's the first time I've ever broken the first length. So, I don't know. 
but you can count it. It probably has the same weight, but as I said, the, the carpet was bunched up. But I'm sure you'll hear it further, guys. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to count sure. the load weights there. It looks like there's quite a few. I don't know what the actual number on there is supposed it. to be. If you want to pause it real quick, we can count them. Mm -hmm. So it looks like Austin sled right here. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven weights at 25 kilos each. So 175 kilos added to the sled. And what do we say the sled was? 70 pounds. And you've got a uh, oh, is it? Did you get the bottom plate as well? There we go. Um, and so. If you didn't see, so some of the top men that we were excited to watch today uh, were obviously uh, Graham and then Martin Matilius, uh, Dieter Schwarzkopf, and Austin Azar. Um, I believe Graham told us that Dieter uh, ended up walking off on the sled pull due to the issues he was having with the sled pull. And so maybe we'll see that next here on the next station. Rage quit. Uh, yeah. And then the man who ends up winning is actually in heat number two. So we never watch him. We never see him on the broadcast here. But that would be Eric Woodward. And then uh, in order, second, third, and fourth goes Graham, Martin, Austin. Why, why you want to spoil it so soon? Well, I was just, <laughs> we're, we're doing a post race here. So. Um, and I was surprised Austin, I assume Austin Azar flew over from Canada, uh, just like anybody would have, would have expected. They thought they'd get a, a fast course, fast sleds with a, with a new country. We now know uh, that that is not the case. It's always a game. not appear to be the case though. Go to Spain, everybody. Spain is the way to go. Barcelona. Spain. Well, and also now Australia <laughs> looks like yeah. it's definitely Spain. Uh -huh. Will you be – what's your High Rocks calendar this year, my friend? I'm going to go with Barcelona. And then I think two weeks after that, I think it's a major. I'll need to check. But I'm, I was going to pull out of Barcelona, depending on the time here. But I'm obviously going to be doing Barcelona now. Redemption. What about, uh, what about the major over here? Uh, I'm going to go for Chicago. Yeah. I'm going to leave out Washington, but Chicago, I'll be there. Okay. So will I. I'll so will the so will I'll probably uh so will probably the the other guy on this call. I will be there. I actually signed up to race it. Nice. Both racing? Yep. I'm racing. Matt asked me to do a double. We'll see how I feel after my my uh, I don't know that race. I'm ready for doubles. I might be ready for a relay. I'm not sure that I'm ready for doubles. We'd have to get more people to do the relay. Well, my buddy Matt Kemp is in, so now we just need a fourth. That was just good. You get to enjoy the, 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 like, the full race when you go for a doubles. Singles are just dying. So, have you raced in Spain before? Um, Valencia once. Valencia? And the do sleds, they have... Uh, this, do they have those manila ropes, like those climbing ropes that are different than these uh, nylon ones? So a year ago. Um, I can't remember what they had, to be honest. Um, I don't know. It's just one big race when you think about it. Yeah. Every race. <laughs> so, you know, I hadn't thought of this till just now, but, you know, when Spartan started... Uh, Anthony, the quality control was pretty bad. So if you went to other countries, the obstacles might be janky, might have made up obstacles, but they wanted to be in every country first and then kind of bring all the QC together. And, you know, they've taken some ownership back of some of those countries. So, you know, it kind of makes sense for obstacle racing that it would be harder to do that for this. It seems pretty simple, right? Buy the same yeah. weights, buy the same sleds, buy the same carpet. But mm -hmm. maybe in a few years, they'll figure it out that like, and again, it's never going to be the exact same temperature changes, et cetera, mm -hmm. different, different lapped courses. But 
uh it's a, it's silly to me that we're just constantly having this conversation for yeah. a, a global I, uh, a global sport i i think they did a really good job uh eliminating the time qualification i mean it'd be great if they could open up the majors uh t- so that anybody could try it but in order to race the world championships there this year you will have to have proven that you can race against the top people and win a spot. So like you have to win your way into the world championships. And I, I like that a lot better than just any old time. No, it's definitely a step in the right direction, but the fact that you have, you know, you have an experienced athlete like the gentleman we have here, who's just as soon as he starts is like, what is happening? He knows there's a yeah. distinctive difference. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Absolutely. And we said, back when Spartans quality control was bad. I, you know, I don't remember it was like 2013 or 2012, 2014, somewhere around there. I did a, uh, a Spartan race in Arizona and there was a chain that you had to drag a cinder block, literally like just a cinder block up a hill and down. And I remember I was watching a guy next to me, he was dragging it in his chain on the way of the downhill rolled back, hit him in the ankle, and then hit a rock and busted open. So you talk about the quality control for Spartan. Well, I was <laughs> talking more globally, but yeah, I remember in the Killington World Championship in 2012, we had chariots of fire. So you pulled a similar apparatus, but it was actually on fire. So you felt the heat on your back as you were pulling it. Did that you pull it downhill? Super, that sounds super safe. No, it was flat, but I definitely oh. remember that one. Didn't but roll into the back of anybody's ankles? But like apparently like the Canadian ultra beasts were really easy. And, you know, in the other countries, it was even more ridiculous. I think this is where, is it Dieter tries to move oh. to another side there? Oh, okay. Right there. Let's, I'm, I'm going to rewind this just to take a look at what he's doing. Cause it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't look like he's getting any pull out of his rope. So he comes up to his Ooh. rope. First one, he's got gloves on. Like nothing's happening. <laughs> So he pulls the slack out and it doesn't move. So they don't let him move over. No, they push him back, I'm sure. But Plus why? The... Not sure. That's actually interesting. I feel like... like well... This isn't budging. He's a lot lighter on me. And then if you look at my, like my full body weight is into this and it's still, it's like, it's not moving fast. Like, I know it should have moved like fast, fast, but like, it should move better than that. Every race I've ever done has been better than this. On the side, so, it's hard to see with the graininess of the video right now, but you can actually see almost the thickness of the carpet, which you usually can't. If you look down, you see mm-hmm. it's like bubbled right there behind Dieter's feet. <clears throat> Wonder if that That's played crazy. into it. Must Did I miss you? Where'd you go? Where are you at here? I didn't. I'm next to Martin. Right next the, to Mark. Uh, okay. Mm-hmm. Second win. Okay. Oh, you're on so the other I'm side right now. Side. That's why. <clears throat> well, yeah, I think me and Martin that just had a conversation at the top when he comes back up. And I was like, this fucking sled is heavy. And he said to me, that isn't right. I wonder when the sled gets back, we can count. Looks like one, two, three, four, five, six weights on there. Two rubbers and four metal. So at 25 kilos each, that's 150 kilo on top of a sled. A sled. Sleds are usually 52 kilo if it's standard sleds. 53, is it? So 202. So two on a kilo pool. total. What's that? On, on a pool, it should only be yeah. 152, is it? 153? Yeah, so it looks like there's 150 kilos added to the sled, but then the sled weight is another. See? I've messed that up, definitely. All right, so what are we saying? Like, oh, he walk off too. That guy just walk out. Uh, he's he's done. Uh huh. But let's but let's go back. So, what do we think this Dieter, actually weighs? 
must be 200 kilos if it weighs 150 if there's 150 um with a weight on it with a weight on it like actual plates then the standard sled is 53 kilos well in the uk the standard sleds dog sleds are 53 kilos or 52.5 so you're talking it's close to 200 or over 200 kilos so it's supposed to be it's supposed to be two hundred and two kilos. So you're saying that in this case they made the weights two hundred and two kilos instead of including the sled weight. Is that what you're saying happened? No, that the total is two hundred two. So Matt has the total weight of what it's supposed to be with the sled. So usually they announce it; it's weight added to the sled. So they added one hundred fifty kilos to the sled, and you're saying the sled is usually fifty two kilos. It's so usually be, a standard sled, please. Yeah, so that'd be so that'd be two hundred and two kilos, which I mean it sounds like the weight is right and it it from what Graham's been saying, it just sounds like it's the carpet that's been me mm -hmm. messed them up a little. So you're saying um, it is the right amount of plates. Yeah. Is this it is, is the right amount of plates. Yeah. I thought you were saying that they that they weighed it that they didn't include the sled and they weighed it too much. That's what, that's I, what I thought. That's what I did think. So wait there. What is the men's pro weight supposed to be on the pool? I'll check that. Uh, it's supposed to be 150 50 added to the sled. No, it's 153 total right. according to this. It should be 153. That should be so that's it should be eh, Matt, it 153 should... total. So that's a, if that's a 153, 150 on the sled, then the sled would take that up to 200 and three. Yeah, so maybe they overloaded the sled and that was the issue then. Cause... That's that's what I'm asking. That's what I've been asking. 153 yeah, on the pole is what it's supposed to weigh total. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. You have the rule book up, right, Matt? Yeah, the rule book is the same as this post on High Rocks Poland. So I the push is 202 kilos for male pro. Push is 202. Then the side pull should be 152, I'm sure. Yeah. Okay, so it's supposed to be 153 kilograms. Let's ignore pounds for now, including the sled. Mm -hmm. Including the sled. What do we think this actually is? It's going to be 203. If the sled's 50. Oh. I'm just asking about the plates right now. You think it's 153 um, with just the I'm plates. not sure because I didn't get a chance to count the plates. I was too busy dying. But did you right, say count, it was 150 right, kilo on top? All right, let's count so the there's plates. six there's six plates on top of each sled, which would mean 150 kilos because they're 25 kilo a piece. So 150 kilos is added to each sled. So it should be 200, 203 kilos. Yeah. So it's it's it, they they forgot that they're supposed to not include. Mm -hmm. They didn't include the weight of the sled, which is what they're supposed to do. I think I've seen it with six plates on it before, though. So I'm not. I'm not convinced that that's what the chain, the difference is. It could be the rope. Maybe it'll be the rope as well. I think it's Either the way, rope. It's heavy. I think it's the rope and the carpet. Uh, this is uh -huh. the type of material they are with the heat. You said it was 27 degrees Celsius there. Uh huh. I mean that's yep. that's pretty hot. So anybody that's trying to figure out what 27 is, that's up in the 80s, 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, which is warm to compete in anywhere. Mm -hmm. And then you got all this extra body heat going on too with all the people there. Was it a was it pretty crowded? Was was it a full course, do you think? Or no, I don't think it sold out to be it was quite quiet, but when we were running down running around it, there's always people in the fast lane. But that always happens. Yeah. So kind of especially around the corner. Diving. Mm hmm all right, so now we got Martin heading into the burpees. Looks 
He's tall, man. Composed. He could just almost just take one big step and get further than the jump, huh? It looks like a meter, but he's jumping too. I just feel like in every venue, we should just walk over and count and just convert like every single time just to make sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I don't like that the guy's pointing to his toes because you're supposed to be able to put your hands at one mm-hmm. feet in front of your your foot. You're supposed to be able to put your hands and then you can step all the way up to your hands. He was quite strict, this man here. Done the exact same thing with me. Suppose you want to keep it strict, but you want to keep it right. Well, I mean, there's one thing about being strict, but you need to make sure it's directly to the rule book, right? And mm-hmm. so if the rule book exactly. says you can put your hands one feet in front of your, or one foot in front of your feet, and then you can step your feet all the way up to your hands, as long as you don't step it in mm-hmm. front, then you should be able to gain that foot almost every burpee. Uh-huh. Um, and it looks like he was making sure Martin didn't step his feet past where his feet landed Um, Mm -hmm. so you're not getting anything out of going down uh you said he does the same thing to you does the same thing you see it yeah i don't think there was enough judges there and the buffies yeah they left martin to go on his own and went back to you and Uh i don't see anybody else with him and i've got two judges yeah yeah those look right i mean your hands are going Right in front of your feet. Your feet are stepping up right up to your hands. A little stumble. Back, yeah. Remember that. Yeah, see? And then he starts pointing that you're not supposed to mm-hmm. go in front of that. No, you I should be able warning. to go up to where your hands are. So this is your first warning. That's what he said there? The back. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, Matt's the one with the rule book up. He could go find the burpees and read it directly off of there, what's allowed and what's not. All righty, stand by. <laughs> Let's go to burpee broad jumps. Just read it directly from the rule book. Because we heard Mintra in the athlete briefing, at least for the Middle East, say one foot. So Previously, before, it used to be your forearm length. That's as right. far as your hands were allowed in front of your feet, but now they clarified it to one foot. Okay, this says the athlete starts with both hands behind the line. The starting position is in the upright position. Hands placed near feet at most one foot length away. Once the hands are placed on the ground, they cannot be moved forward. In the lower position, the athlete's chest must touch the ground. Then... The athlete stands up and jumps forward, jumping and landing with both feet simultaneously. When standing back up slash jumping back from the bottom position, feet cannot pass the parentheses previously placed position of the athlete's hand. The length of the jump is up to the athlete. Taking any steps forward between the repetitions is not allowed. So, like you said, the previously placed position of the hands, not the previously placed position of the feet, which Graham said they were making it so he wasn't allowed to step in front of where his feet were when he first went down. So you had to, the way he was making it out was you had to be behind your hands. So as I bring my foot up, um, it had to be behind my hands. Both so, feet as behind your hands. Yeah. It just says not in front of the previously placed position of your hands. So, I mean, what this guy did is where he steps up his toe right into his palm. That looks acceptable. Mm-hmm. But you got a warning because your feet jumped in front of where they previously had been. Mm-hmm. Oh, so wobble. Yeah. I don't think this guy's part of the, the pro 
man. I think he might be. I think he might be, but I'm sure he was on the podium. Like the second place. I don't know. An age yeah. group. Hmm. He's flying, man. I mean, that's really freaking good. Just stumbling on there on the burpees. I, might be right, let's, I don't know. Let's. Uh, I haven't seen Austin Azar come through on this yet. He's still quite close by. Was he? So maybe we just quite... missed him. Mm-hmm. I think he you're, must be you, in the burpees. You're you're out of the burpees now. At this point, I was out before he started. I'm sure. Oh, okay. So I yeah. As I was leaving, he was just like, coming in. Okay. How do you feel like your burpees uh, went during this race? And we'll skip ahead. I felt fine on them. Um, it was just like the first um, 50, sorry, 40 meters. I felt fine. And then see the last maybe well, 10 meters after that, I had to keep like kneel, step up, then jump just to get my breath back. But I felt fine. I could have pushed harder, I reckon. Could have. Could have. Didn't. Is that is that Martin? He's on the rower, so I go on the rower, and I go beside him. I get the rower. I'm sure he was 180 meters in front, and he finished the rower quicker than me, and he was like 230 meters in front of me. So from that point on, I knew it was a race, kind of from the here actually, because 230 meters is still a big gap, but. Like I, I felt like on the runs, I was kind of closing in on him. Yeah, you were catching him on the runs. Um, it felt like that. I don't actually know, but it did feel like that. So going into the row, or I'm just looking at the splits. It looks like you're fifty-one seconds back. Fifty-one. Mm-hmm. Fifty-one seconds <clears throat> back. So. What are you pulling on the rower? This was a slow row for me. I think I started off one four three, and then tapered to one four eight. Four eight. Did you ever look over at Martin's screen and see what he was pulling? Uh, he was pulling when I first came in. He was pulling one forty to one four four, and he was quite consistent under one four five. The uh, live stream comments here. Alation Hannah says, "Come on, Graham." <laughs> I'm guessing she works at Alation with you. Uh, that's my girlfriend, but she oh. works at Alation as well. Uh, oh, there you go. Number one. So all the, are all the M's uh, after it meant to be like mmm, like tasty, or is it just she calling you Graham? Must she be. holding the M. Probably has to put that there. To make me feel better knowing I'm gonna watch this back and this big handsome guy's right next to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's a legitimate model. He's not just like he model, like I know. He's actually a freaking model. Martin does not care about row technique, says Marcus yeah. Wallace of hybrid fitness media. Well, that's because he's huge. Look at his knees are getting in the way. He's got a he's pulling over the top of him on his return. So there's Austin. There's Austin's man. coming in a little behind, uh, a little behind you here. Three twenty-two. So he's about two minutes back of you. I think I was six hundred meters before he came in. Yeah, two. Yeah, makes some five, sense. Maybe five hundred, six hundred, a bit there. So, are you looking at the at the clock uh, at any point during this? Are you seeing? Like where you're at, realizing you're not going under an hour. Mm-hmm. This yeah. is what I realized that I was like, there's not a chance. I, I, I don't know if I came into the road at 41 or I came off the road at 41, and that's when I knew I I'll need to look at the splits because I've not had a chance to actually like look at them properly. Yeah. But I think I might be so wrong, can... but this is when I realized that there's not a chance I'm getting under 60 minutes here. Yeah. Like zero you can... chance. You come off the rower at 40 minutes and 50 seconds. Is that what it was? That, that, that's when I realized. 
Yeah. Usually coming off the rower uh, for the men, you can assume there's about 20 ish minutes left. Mm -hmm. 22. I think you need to be off the roll by about 36 minutes. And under yeah. that's even better. Which is about the time you came into the row. Ryan Kent said. Yeah, Ryan Kent says, my guess is Graham will probably catch Martin by the wall balls. We're still looking at a 63 or so, which mm -hmm. is about right. When I got to the farmer carries, that's when I realized it. Did uh, did you think you were going to be catching Martin at this point? Uh, as soon as I got to the farmer carries, and he was like, I think it was a six lane farmer carry. So he was like four lanes in front. And then I just thought, it's good race here because I'm going to probably catch him in the wall balls. Okay. Well, let's go up to the farmer carry then. So, and that, that's what kind of motivated me. I was like, this is where I'll just put the fit, fit in the gas and just go for it because I can potentially catch him on the wall balls. And that's when I didn't expect this other guy pop through in the second heat. But better man won in the day. That's what happens. So JK Hybrid Training, James Kelly says, bet you first beer that Graham win at a 62.57. So you know what I just noticed, guys? That this rule book is 22.23, and it has not been updated. So they should probably get on that. Mm -hmm. I, mean, sure. I don't know if it, I don't know if anything changed or not, but it just looks better if it actually is correct. We need to add stuff. They've got no um, performance enhancers like that's not allowed. They don't have that in the rule book. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna. We I'm need gonna, to add that. I'm gonna juice up for Chicago. Then let's go. <laughs> Supposedly you can. Yeah, they definitely need to add that. Uh. Mm -hmm. So, here, I'm just going to read some of the comments. Marcus Wallace says, the race is cool, but what shoes are everyone wearing? What shoes were you wearing, Graham? I wore the Puma Deviate twos. Felt pretty good, to be honest. What are they called? Can you spell that? Puma what? Puma Deviate. I've got them on. I'm still sitting here in a state, a state of mess. Are you saying are you saying Puma deviate nitro? Puma deviate. Yep, nitro. Yep. So those are the green ones. Is that what those girls were wearing earlier too? Were the were the women wearing them? Um, it might have been. These are the twos. So you've got one and two. These are the twos. I can't flip the camera. So I uh, I paused this for a second because I wanted. Graham. So Kent says Graham sacrificed strength and power for speed, and it's looking like that formula didn't mix so well. Irax is a complicated game to play. I would say from what we've <laughs> talked about, it sounds like it's more the course and not necessarily you sacrificing strength and power because you said you're pretty close to your one reps right now. Very close to my five rep. My, my all time five reps is 175 kilos for a squat for the back squat and then I tested that four weeks ago because obviously you don't want to test it too close to the high rocks and it was 170 for five reps so nah, I have definitely not sacrificed any strength or power it still gets so, done so the, we're just we're looking at issues with the course not necessarily issues with the athletes I definitely think it is like yeah. When does Martin ever get that time? Yeah. Like my last three races, including a grid style race in the Elite 15. Like well, put it this way, if Hunter raced in this race, he he probably wouldn't wouldn't have subbed 60 minutes because he was two minutes in front of me at the worlds, which means he'd have got a 102. He'd have still won the race, but he would have got a 102. Yeah. I I'm a, absolutely could see that happening. And when's the last time we saw Hunter go above 60? And I don't think, when's the last time we saw Martin go above 60? Martin's been doing it for a while, and he doesn't really go above 60 minutes. Uh, 
Um, well, she won, you won the men's pro in Manchester, 59, broke, broke 60 as well there, and that was a tough yeah. course. Yeah. So, I'm sure his sled pulls really fast, usually. Yeah, he, he's really fast at his sled pulls. I think he's over four minutes. Just gonna on the side here. I'm gonna look up Martin's previous High Rocks times, just to see if I can find. Hey Martin, I mean, uh, sorry. Hey, uh... <laughs> oh shoot. <laughs> hey uh, Graham. Yeah. When you're done running. <clears throat> And you're just chilling out for the afternoon. Do you want to be on a relay team with me and uh, me and Anthony? In Chicago? Yeah. I'll let you know. That sounds like a no. You can tell me to my face. I'm a I'll let you I know. Can, I can take it. You can <laughs> say it to my face. Um, we'll oh, see. Martin. Let's see, what's got, see what we have planned in Chicago. Hey, Anthony. This place, hey, so. hey, Anthony. This is really yes. important. This is really important. Can we count on you, or will you be on like baby duty during doubles, during relay? If I got another race, I'm sure it'll be okay. I mean, just tell me which uh, which two stations are you going to have me do on this relay? Because that's that might be the deciding factor for me. Is it just two, or you have to do two? It's you. Everybody does two, and everybody does two runs. Yeah, so you have to run and do a station. <clears throat> And you can do any two, but you have to run into a station. Okay. I think for, I think, I mean, it, it's cruel to give you the push and the pull. So you got to take one of those, right? You're the strongest so far out of me and Matt Kemp. It depends who our fourth is, but you got to take one of those. Which one I, do you want? Okay. I, I mean, I don't really care. I probably am better pushing than I am pulling. Okay, if you take the push, you can pick your other station. How about that? I don't know. We'll see. I mean, if we are uh, if we're crushing it and we actually want to do well, I could probably do the wall balls unbroken. So I would probably oh. say wall balls. All right, well, that but sounds good. If we're if we're not, and I'm not trying to die, especially after running my own race, maybe I can do like the row or the farmer carry. Okay. I don't want to do the lunges. This is going to be my don't. first race, my first race back post, you know, rehab. So. Okay. I, I don't want to do the lunges. Okay. So don't, okay. uh, don't put that one on me. Okay. Well, sounds good. All right. Back to the race. <laughs> All right. So it looks like we're oh, out wait. of farmer carry. Looks like we're out of the farmer carry and we're on to the run before the lunges. Uh, on here, it shows Graham going into the lunges. You are 54 seconds back. 54, so he's actually gained time there. Yeah, so he's gained just a little bit of time Ten. on you. Um, mm -hmm. 10 seconds. Yeah. And then it looks like Austin Azar has moved his way up and is a minute 20 behind you. So you you guys are all kind of just around that minute mark apart, minute and a half. Uh, which, on a four-lap course, <clears throat> what were you uh, almost a full lap then behind? You were never lapped by Martin, right? Must have been like close to like maybe like half a lap, maybe three quarters a quarters of a lap in front. Yeah, because I was I was trying to look to see if I could see him like across the other side, but I couldn't see him. So you might have been about three quarters of a lap behind him uh, on this uh -huh. run, and then uh, I think going into the wall balls, you uh, you, if I remember right, you're like. 50, 45, 50 seconds behind him. So you make up some time there. And I will get to it here in just a second, but I, I remember seeing Martin labor pretty bad on his wall balls. They did not look good. Uh -huh. But sore. 
So here, let's uh, skip ahead to the lunges. And Martin, being six foot five, probably gets giant steps out of these lunges, huh? I think he do you starts think he, to struggle here. Does he? Do you, do think, you so. think? Do you think he takes uh, maybe ten less lunges than you overall in a hundred meters? Ten less steps. He's, he's got a lunge at least one point two meters, at least yeah. one meter. Look at the size of the steps. Yeah. Jesus. Jesus, feet are big too. He's got to wear like size fourteen or fifteen shoes there. I just got it all. I think it's Ackerman run about here somewhere, and that's when I see it. And that gives that gives me like more hope to go right. It's probably a race now. Well, you 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 catch sight of him and you think, okay, I can catch him mm -hmm. here. Uh, I caught I clocked it at the farmer carries, and I looked over. I was like four lanes in front, and I went, mm, I could probably catch him in the wall balls. I was just no. I just knew I was going to be behind them the full race, um, up until the wall balls, and then when it got here, see, there he's there, there I'm there. So he's like a bit, like a full lane and almost two lanes ahead. But I was like, I could probably catch him. So just looking at it, I I don't know. All I'm looking speed, at is... speed up a bit. What's that? But my, my run was that fast. I don't think my last run was that fast because I actually held back on it, even though I thought it was going to be like the race was on. But I was like, if I can hold back a bit, then I can put more into the wall balls. So it actually looks like, I mean, you say you have him in your sights and you can catch him, and it looks like you're moving pretty well, a little bit better than he does. Uh, but felt good on maybe it's maybe it, yeah, maybe it's just the long the long stride he has. So you come into the lunges 54 seconds back and you actually leave a minute two back. So he gains eight seconds on the lunges, uh, which just What's makes it? me think he starts to fall apart on the last run into the wall balls. Maybe. And then we're looking at Austin. He's always Azar. got a fast lunge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, that's just got to be because of his height and length. Got to be. And his strength. Yeah, his strength. So, right. Uh, looking through here, so Austin <clears throat> going into the lunges is a minute 19 behind you. And we'll watch uh, the first couple people, you and Martin, coming out of the lunges here. Mm -hmm. Um. And you guys all are pretty much very similar uh, spacing coming out. A couple seconds here and there. Hey, quick update. I just heard from Hannah, third place female. She did an extra lap. Oh, really? Bummer. Yeah. That's nice. tough. Still took third place though. Yeah. Let's take that. All right. So I'm gonna move ahead on this last run here. Look at Marcus with the prediction. A couple yeah, of look guys. at all these. Uh -huh. A couple of good guys in Heat 2 could take the win. And that, I mean, it does happen. So the guy that's in Heat 2 does end up winning. I am very curious if uh, if he would have been with these top guys, if they, you, you feel like you could have stayed with uh, somebody else going a little faster in the Heat. You know, you see them going... So you're able to maintain a pace just off them. Mm -hmm. Well, it's doesn't it happen in England well, all the time? Because there's just so many people and they end up even the third heat. That happens sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, it shouldn't be a, an excuse, should it? Oh, the better man 
outperformed no, everybody it should not be, it should not be an excuse. <laughs> no but i mean i mean that happens a lot like you you race the people that you're racing against, not necessarily against the course. It's there's people that are racers and there's people that are time trialers, and um, you know, you, you race the course, you race the people. Like uh, Hunter was saying, horses not courses. <laughs> it's true. Just looking at these comments. <laughs> yeah. Martin on the wall balls. Button. Man, he looks like you just reach up and touch that ball to the target, <laughs> not even have to throw it. There you go. Somebody rooting for Graham. Come on. Oh. Oh. Frozen. Oh, there you go. There we go. Well, his first set looks good. I know going into the end here, though, he, he starts to, like, get segmented and disjointed on his wall balls. Graham, I have and a question. Kind of... for... I, have, I have a question for you, Graham. Mm-hmm. We did. We were trying to get a photo, right? How how could uh -huh. you how could you lose Martin? Because I was planning on it. See, after he podiumed, I was planning on grabbing him and then Eric, and then he just disappeared. He went to the side. I had my eyes on him. And He's then he twelve feet tall. He's twelve feet tall. <laughs> how can you lose him? Uh -huh. He's the he's like the easiest the person way. to spot in the whole building. It was like Batman gone. Form starting to break down. No reps. You got fifteen no reps. 15? I don't know. I got a good. I, I don't know. I'm just making out. Well, but I got bad, at least seven. Th this is a bad angle. We got to get to the side to be able to tell. What did they say? What they are no repping mm -hmm. you for? Was it hitting the target, so, hitting low, or depth? Go lower, lower, just depth. Tell the camera guy, um, Anthony, to move over. Yeah. I'll type it in. Just give me a minute. That's oh. an inter interesting form. <laughs> yeah, that well, those is that allowed? I mean, not in CrossFit. You can't disjoint your it has to be one fluid motion, but it looks like they're counting them for him. Uh Kind of looks like he's pushing off his knees with his elbows, almost stopping and then getting a little like extra push, push pressing the wall ball. This oh. is like this is like watching Charles Barkley play golf. This is the weirdest <laughs> form I've ever seen. Is this how he usually does it? No, that would be That's just sure. like see how he's rebending his knees. Yeah, this is bizarre. So they're counting it and they should not. I, it was getting a lot of no reps. I heard that, and that's what was motivating me to, uh, to keep going. But he's not. This guy's just looking up to make sure the ball hits. Mm -hmm. He doesn't seem to be caring that he's got this weird stop know. and start format. Hmm. So, you know, if I had an athlete doing that, I would tell him, hey, you want to hold that ball up, hold it under your chin, actually just like Graham's doing. Is there anything you would tell Martin on this one, Graham? Chest up. Yeah. Chest up. Catch it at chin height. Catch it at chest height. He's you underhand see catching forward? it. See the hinge forward? I think yeah. that's making it worse for him. Yeah. I don't know if it's maybe because his femurs are longer and it feels like he needs to go. They can only get depth. Yeah, but he's kind of cradling him. the ball. I know. I don't know. This is me asking how many reps. Then there's one yeah. point I hear it before the finish line. I just hear he's at 86 and I'm at, I'm sure they said 86 and I'm at 72. So I was like, right, don't break, finish it. Well, Graham, your form looks great on those. Keeping the hands under the ball, Thanks. up on the sides. 
bottom half. Still good in the wall ball, seriously. Right under but the broke chain. Quite a lot. Martin's kind of going up on his toes, cradling the ball, punched over. On the pin. He's and getting a lot of no reps. He might he might serve himself better if he actually just takes a little bit longer break and then tries to do a, a <clears> bigger <throat> set unbroken. Oh yeah. Wait. Right wise, yeah. That's it. Oh, it looks like you got him by four reps. Four reps. So Graham finishes uh, your finishing time. 104.11. What were you thinking up there on the podium know, when I, you saw your time? That, that annoyed me. I don't know if you see my hand. I was like, that is what it is. But it did annoy me looking at that time. But I was happy, to, the... to be honest. I was happy that I bet Martin. Nothing against Martin, but he bet me in Valencia, so that was like a redemption for me. Nice. So I've got a few guys from like last season that I like to pick off and kind of get through and go like, this is my redemption. Like that Eric, he'll now be on my list to go, right, I'm beating this guy. That was just, that wasn't my best race. And yeah. obviously it wasn't a lot of people's best race, but... um. There's plenty more in the tank for me. Austin needs to get deeper. There we go, Austin. Was this uh, your slowest time? This is my slowest time ever. Well, no ever. This, well, since starting to take it serious, this is my slowest time. I came six overall in Valencia with a time of 102. 50 something seconds. And I'm taking second today with a time a one oh four. It's ridiculous. Yeah. One oh four after one oh two being a sixth place. Yeah. Uh and there's top three. Oh, there's top three for heat one. You guys yeah. actually end up as second, third, and fourth overall. Uh, and we're not gonna see it on here because they don't go back and show heat number two, but that's uh see high rocks daily high rocks races are comparable over and out how do you what do you think about that he's joking that's yeah, that's a joke that's a joke <laughs> like if you think about it like in the grid they're supposed to like the hardest races right because there's so many turns and uh like even in like the farmers uh the lunges there's so many turns up and back so, if I'm getting 58 minutes, 41 seconds in a grid, then why am I getting an hour and four there? Like, it's not as if I've massively changed my training. I've actually had done more running, became a better and became stronger. And I Did you get that? You said you've you've gotten faster and stronger since you've started. Mm -hmm. I know, but uh, that's what I've said. So, did you get the the last? All right, you cut out there for a second. Ah, uh, sorry. So, what I'm saying is, like, there's a grid, right? Um, we raced at the grid, and I got fifty eight forty one. And in the space of what, three four months, I went from a fifty eight forty one in the grid style race, which is supposed to be the hardest race, to then getting a one oh four. Like, yeah, come on. Come on. Doesn't make sense. Six, Come on. Six minutes. It's crap. <laughs> I'm from my dummy. Yeah. From from what I can tell, the the grid just because of turning around on the burpees, <clears throat> turning around on the lunges, uh, and there was one more in the farmer carry. You end up mm -hmm. about a minute to a minute fifteen ish slower uh, due to all the turnarounds compared to a straightaway course. Mm -hmm. So, uh, 
that should have been if if Manchester was supposedly a slower course with the grid style and you go six minutes slower here today, uh, there's got to be other factors, especially you you're keep training. It's not like you took four months off, right? So. Yeah, my, that's, that's what I'm saying. My running's got better. I've actually got yeah. stronger. So like, I just, I don't know. I know you still need to put, the, you need to mesh the two in the gutter, but I don't know, come on, six minutes. Yeah. I don't see it. I mean, I, I'm <laughs> sure you said it was hot there. The heat probably affected you guys. Um, the heat and the sweat could have affected the moisture in the carpet, the moisture's in the rope, the elasticity of the rope, all that kind of stuff. So um, I could see it being slower. And if it's harder, even if you guys put more effort in and only come out a few seconds or even a, a minute behind on the ropes or the sleds, you still end up losing that energy for later in the race. So you, you come out more fatigued. So it slows down the rest of your race in comparison. Uh -huh. That's what it is. Nope. That was my body. All right. <laughs> let's let's uh let's wrap it up, gents. Graham, thanks for joining us. Uh you want to tell anybody where to follow you or where to go get coaching from you? Yeah, thanks for having me. You can find me at Alation Fitness Training. Um just search me on Instagram, you'll get me there. And if uh, you need Anthony... some coaching, you can just send me a message or you can click the link tree in a bio and that'll take you straight to a form you guys hear this cat hang on i gotta want to anthony tell them where they to find you while i let my cat out okay uh i'm on the hybrid engine me and lauren weeks we put that program out we actually just released a new uh strength training program for endurance athletes for beginners uh so if you have zero to one year experience in any sort of strength training and you're looking just to improve your strength get uh more acclimated to it uh, i recommend it's a 12-week straight up program or you can follow our uh, tracks there's the daily dose or the pro track um, and mostly it's you know what i program for lauren and uh, we make it adaptable to anybody that wants to join and you can find hybrid fitness media's website instagram or podcast wherever you find those things hybrid fitness media